All right, today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the Exynos processors in these amazing Samsung Galaxy phones, going from the S7's 14 nanometer Exynos all the way to 7 nanometers in a Note 10 Plus. Centimeter away. That is a record. That is insanely high. That is uh, that is gonna fry some testicles. Now, in case you don't know, Samsung make two editions of their Samsung Galaxy phones. One with a Snapdragon chip, and another one with their own Exynos. And over the years, the Exynos processor has been lackluster in performance when compared to the Snapdragon. However, this year it's slightly different. We got the 14 nanometer, a lousy 2,000 single core. Then you got the 10 nanometer with 3,500 and the single core speed of the seven nanometer. Look at that, it's more than double of the 14. This Note 10 Plus, this guy goes more than twice as fast as the 14 nanometer chip in the S7. And interestingly enough, the single core performance of the Note 10 Plus's seven nanometer chip is actually faster than the Snapdragon. And multi-core score, that's a very impressive 10,500. However, on the graphics front, the Snapdragon destroys the Exynos chip. This year they decided to only use 12 cores instead of 18 cores like last year. And bomb shakalaka, we have some results. Once again, the winner winner chicken dinner, 5,000. Beats out the S9 by 1,500 points. That is a vast improvement. So even though it is faster than the S9, it's still slower than the Snapdragon. So which edition are you getting? Well, it depends where in the world you live. However, me, I'm stuck with the Exynos. I personally don't see that as a bad thing because single core performance is very useful. I mean, it's a thousand points on Geekbench faster than a Snapdragon, a thousand points. FYI, 4,500 is only what? 500 behind my friggin' eight core MacBook Pro. So for example, this year's Note 10 Plus gets 4,500 on a single core. That is like 500 points below my MacBook Pro 2019 8-core i9. So this is an amazing processor you're getting. Also, on specifications, man, do you know what this CPU can do? You can do 8K 30 frames a second. The reason why this Note only records 4K is because it has to support the Snapdragon's limitation of only 4K recording. If Samsung just ditched Snapdragon and doubled ahead with the steam that they're making with Exynos chips, we could be having 8K phones very soon. And as you can see, the improvement they've made literally every single year, every single generation has been massive. And we are done, as you can see, a doubling of performance. We went from 14 nanometers to seven nanometers and it doubled 16 all the way to 35. And on the thermals, the Exynos processor from this year is a lot cooler than last year's 10 nanometer chip. So as the test finishes, 90%, the highest, the Note 10 Plus is 35 degrees and the S9, you can see the heat is, can you see that? You can see the heat is pretty much encompassed the whole of the phone and it's hit 30, 40 degrees. What about software? You might have seen some demos where the Exynos chip is really chuggy and slow and all that kind of stuff compared to the Snapdragon edition. And this, look how choppy that is. Now, on the Snapdragon version, it is smooth as silk. Now I'm gonna let you know why this is so choppy. And the reason why it is, is because it's not been optimized. Samsung, they are not too good in the software development department. They even tried hiring me as a software developer a few years ago. So <laughs> that's the level you're in. Because for example, this is another Exynos chip. And look what happens when I try to trim it. Look at that, smooth as silk. And this again is an Exynos processor. Now this processor is a heck of a lot faster than this one, yet this one is smooth as silk 4K, whereas this one is choppy as Chopsville. I can tell you, it's all just software optimizations. And actually literally yesterday, Samsung released an update to their video editor app and it fixes all that sluggishness as you can see. One of the interesting things about modern CPUs inside mobile phones is that they actually have an integrated modem. So the LTE modem is actually built within the CPU. I tested it out between the S9 and the Note 10 Plus. Now this is interesting because in the same test environment on the S9 I was getting a slower download speed and up to 150 milliwatts per meter squared. However, on the Note 10 Plus, 
I was getting a much better connection, 100 megabits per second download and only 60 milliwatts per meter squared. Personally, I always turn off 4G and I go to 3G because uh, 4G is very, very, very crazy and 5G is gonna be insane. Now I'm gonna go one centimeter away, test it again. Let's see how fast, how crazy the speeds can go. Get 150 milliwatts. 222 million, 244. Do not keep this phone in your pocket. <laughs> it's gonna cause some damage. 430 milliwatts per meter squared. That is a record. That is insanely high. That is uh, that is gonna fry some testicles. I mean, 400 milliwatts per meter squared. That is four times the recommended limit of World Health Organization for cell towers. Don't put that thing close in your pockets. Even when it's on sleep, it's buzzing out. However, with a little bit of LAMS radiation proof boxes, the meter just drops right down. It needs to always be at least 10 centimeters away or just turn off 4G, stick to 3G and be safe. So we're getting 10 milliwatts less than that. It's yellow, it's still on green. It is not that shabby. So overall processing definitely has improved. Graphics has improved through the generations, although it's not up there with the latest and greatest. But do you need graphics on a mobile phone? Maybe for VR, maybe, maybe VR. But outside of that case, it's gonna be a battery killer. Battery killer, running all those crazy high scores. So I think I'm kinda happy with my Exynos chip. Are you happy with your Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus with the Exynos processor? Or would you wish you had one of those snappy Snapdragons? Let me know. the ultimate finding out of how well Samsung have improved over the years. On the left, we have a 14 nanometer Exynos chip. On the right, we have a 10 nanometer Exynos chip. And right bam in the middle is that new brand spanking new seven nanometer chip. So 4% ahead, not that much, not that much between 10 and seven, but between 14 and 10, a massive difference. And we got, we got a winner, 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 chicken dinner. The seven nanometer one is just about to finish. Oh, you have to get the close line. Who's gonna win? Cleary seven. Nice, one. He's got 4,500 single core speed and multi-core score. That's a very impressive 10,500. And that's gonna be interesting when we compare that to the Snapdragon score because online, I swear that one was getting 10,500. We've got the 14 nanometer, a lousy 2,000 single core. Then you got the 10 nanometer with 3,500 and the single core speed of the seven nanometer. Look at that, it's more than double of the 14 and it's more than double on the multi-core score. And these are all eight core chips. Look, eight cores, eight cores and eight cores. That is very impressive over the years. Exynos has improved. Let's go into compute and let's see what we can do. It's a tight race, particle physics, who's gonna win first? They're all at 77%, 88% on the right, 100%, we've won, 70%, 70%, 100%, boom, we're done, rent script score, we got 9,300 on the compute inside the seven nanometer chip. Next up, not that far behind, 8,800, only, what's that, 600, 300, 400, 600 points behind, 500, 550 points behind is the S9, and all the way in the bottom of the queue with only 6,000, that is the S7 and its 14 nanometer chip. So the GPU on this Exynos chip has not improved as much. I feel like uh, maybe their decision to use a 12 core chip for graphics has let them down. All right, now it's time to take this testing to the next level. We've got Antutu on how many devices? We've got an iPad Pro A. 12X Bionic chip and S7, all this kind of awesomeness. Three, two, one, let's go. And we are done. As you can see, a doubling of performance. We went from 14 nanometers to seven nanometers and it doubled 16 all the way to 35. And it's defeated 99% of all users. Unfortunately, the iPad Pro, probably just a bug in the software. It refused to continue on the demos, but it was winning at the initial. Let's see, 3D mark. And the iPad is just not having a good day at the moment. We're gonna do slingshot extreme this time. 
just running some performance tests. Now, the iPad is the fastest device, but for some reason it just keeps crashing. Look, it just paused right here. So while it was winning the race, yeah, right now it's not winning at all. The Note 10 is getting 40 frames a second here. The S9 is getting 26 and the S7 is getting 7. So there's a definite marked improvement between the ranges. I'll be publishing the results very soon. It's a shame that uh, these benchmarking apps don't work so well on iOS because it was winning the race. And bomb shakalaka, we have some results. Once again, the winner winner chicken dinner, 5,000. Beats out the S9 by 1,500 points. That is a vast improvement. S7 is still processing. And unfortunately, on iOS, I don't know what it is, but it just keeps crashing these apps. It can't handle the heat. Maybe it gets too hot and it has to crash, or maybe it's just poorly programmed. All right, I'm now gonna be doing a CPU video encoding test. MP4 fast, MP4 fast, and MP4 fast. Converting it to H264, three, two, one, go. The S10 is clearly way ahead of the S9. The S7 is again also ahead of the S9. So it's really between the 14 nanometer chip and the seven nanometer chip. Boom, the Note 10 has finished. Next up is the S9 versus S7. S9 is picking up speed. It's a nice race. And boom, the S9 is second. And last in the final position is the S7. How long is it going to take? Interesting how it actually started off really fast, but then the S9 caught up. And we're done. All right, let's see the temperatures of the S9 versus the Note 10 Plus when they're idling. The Note 10 Plus is getting about 32 and a half degrees and the S9 is 32 and a half degrees as well. Geekbench 5, 36 degrees on the Note 10 Plus. And 36.6 is the hottest area. So it seems like the hot area of the S9 is this area here and the Note 10 Plus is up here, that's the hot area. Speed wise, they're around the 50% mark. The highest we can get here on the Note 10 Plus is 35.5, whereas the S9, the highest I can get is 36, 37.7, 37.7, look at that, 37.7. And the S9 Plus, it's still a lot cooler, 30, the Note 10 Plus is winning the race. It's running cooler than the S9, which is behind. Let's see what happens when we get towards the end. So as the test finishes, 90%, the highest, the Note 10 Plus, is 35 degrees. And the S9, you can see the heat is, can you see that? You can see the heat is pretty much encompassed the whole of the phone and it's hit 30, 40 degrees, 40, 40 degrees the S9, 40 degrees, that is burning, and Note 10 Plus is still a lot cooler.